It's Writing Wednesday, and today's video is a little bit different. If you've never seen one of John Green's Thoughts from Places videos, then you won't recognize the original to which I'm paying homage. Homage? Homage? I, I never get that word right. Let me know in comments. But anyway, I hope you enjoy my Thoughts from Places, which is a continuation of my thoughts from last week's visit to Port Union. I told you about Port Union last week, how I went to visit the only Union-built town in Canada, possibly all of North America, as part of research for this novel. The whole town is a testament to the power of one man's dream of creating a better world. And as such, it's a place that's both inspiring and discouraging. Now, this hits home for me because one of the underlying themes of this novel I'm writing is this urge that we have as humans to do good, to try to make the world a better place. Part of the novel is set in Port Union specifically because I wanted my characters to be there to participate and to observe as Coker tried to build what was essentially a model town, a town that was built on the radical principle that fishermen's labor should benefit fishermen themselves and not the wealthy merchants who live far away. And the struggle for women's suffrage that some of the characters in my novel are more directly involved in, and that is a cause that Coker himself also supported, it's another facet of that same struggle, the human belief that we can change our world for the better. Looking at the skyline of Port Union is inspiring, but it's also discouraging, especially when you see the homes that Coker built for his workers, revolutionary in their time and now crumbling into disrepair. It's wonderful that so much history has been preserved by the historical society there, and yet sad that so much of Coker's dream is now only a museum piece. Coker's reforms, both through the FPU itself and through his involvement in politics, were part of a bigger change in the culture questioning that basic assumption that working men's labor belonged to the wealthy classes to exploit at will. Just for challenging that assumption, Coker deserves his place in Newfoundland history. But he could not have foreseen that not only his union, but the fishery itself would someday be gone, leaving Port Union, like almost every Newfoundland fishing village, a shell of its former bustling self. While a town with history this rich could be one of the island's major tourist destinations, the money simply doesn't exist to develop it the way it deserves, and the industry that the town was built on no longer exists. As for Coker himself, he was, like all visionaries, a bundle of contradictions. His image towers over the town like a hero, but he made decisions both in his personal and his political life that few people could wholeheartedly admire. A visit to Holy Martyr's Anglican Church, the church that Coker had built for his model town, Reminds me that Coker's vision, like that of so many of the revolutionaries and world changers of his time, was firmly rooted in his religious faith. That's something we often forget in our secular age, not just how religious our ancestors were, but how deeply their faith informed their desire to make a better world. Perhaps the stained glass window in the Holy Martyr's Church puts Coker's vision in a broader context, and it gives me a hint of an answer to one of the questions that's at the heart of my novel. How do we keep up with the struggle to make a better world? even when our efforts so often seem to be defeated or our best achievements erased by time. Perhaps the striving itself and the spirit that motivates it matters most in the end, even if our life's work is going to end up inside glass cases for tourists to gawk at.